Traditionally, there has been a belief that investing is hard as there has been a tendency to overcomplicate the process and to charge exorbitant fees which have resulted in the vast majority of people being excluded from investing their own money. Easy Equities was one of the first platforms that disrupted this old age of thinking by removing the barriers to entry into local and international stock markets, making the purchase of shares easy, cheap and fun, ensuring that anyone can own shares in the companies they know and love. Now, I've been using this platform for a couple of months now, and I can honestly say that they have done a great job at democratizing share ownership by addressing the inequality in access that millions of South Africans had to face when it came to investing in the financial markets. They are really innovative and constantly improving and expanding their platform and is truly an app that I would definitely recommend to anyone looking to start the investment journey. The Easy Equities platform has been designed to be both user-friendly and intuitive, so once you get the hang of it, you'll find investing to be an easy, fun and simplified process. So in today's video, I'm going to give you a comprehensive beginner's guide tutorial on exactly how to use the web portal of Easy Equities so that you will be fully equipped and confident to put your heart and monies to good use. This is going to be a long one, so I will add timestamps to the description that you can use to jump to the sections that you are most interested in. Alright, so without further ado, let's get started. Right, so I'm going to start with how to open an account with Easy Equities, but if you already have an account, then you can just skip this part, but if you haven't yet, then go look in the description, there's a link, click on it, and it will take you to this page. Right, so you need to enter your country of citizenship, country of residence and country of birth. All three of them should be South Africa. Then you need to select your profile type. For most of you, it will be for individuals 18 years and older. Then you need to create a username, type in your email address and create a password. Pretty simple stuff, guys. Then where did you hear about us? If you clicked on my link, it will give the referral code automatically, which is the EE1210941. Um, if you use my code, you'll get a 50 Rand free voucher to use as you please and to just get your kickstart on your investment journey. And I will also get a 50 Rand discount on my brokerage. So doing that will help out the channel, but you don't have to use my code. You can use someone else or not at all, but just a nice kickback for both of us. And then you click on I accept and on next. Then you need to fill in your personal details, your title, first name, middle name, initials, ID number, date of birth, gender, mobile number, security question. This goes without saying, make sure you pick a, the correct security question answer and that you can remember it because you will need this when your account gets blocked for some reason. Address details, pretty simple guys. You just fill in your street address and your city and your code and province. Then know your client, FICA. So Easy Equities makes the whole application process a lot simpler by not requesting any documents to be uploaded. So they basically just ask you a bunch of information regarding your income and where you get your funding from and how you want to spend it. So with source of income, just declare your primary source of income. It's usually, it will usually be a salary. Account funds will probably be salary or savings. Current earnings sector, if you are employed, you can say private sector employment, otherwise self-employed, just choose what is most suitable to you. Then your income band, select how much you've earned before tax. Investment experience, it doesn't really matter what you select here. For most of us, it will be either beginner or intermediate. So you can just select a beginner and then risk appetite. This is important to know, not necessarily for the app, but for yourself, because you need to know in which type of asset you want to invest in. If you don't yet know what your risk appetite is or what asset allocation you should be looking for, then make sure to check out this video as I explain exactly how to determine your risk appetite and your asset allocation. So after you're done with this, maybe go check that out. Okay, then you need to select if you are an influential or public person. You can read through exactly what that means, but if you are not related to Jacob Zuma or sponsored by the Guptas, then you will probably select no. 
then you need to read through all the six I hereby confirm clauses. Make sure you are comfortable with everything. There are links to the T's and C's and the cost profile and consent document. But don't worry, I'll go through everything that you need to know in this video. So yeah, you can read it if you have the time. Click on I confirm, next. And then the system will load. They will verify your identity. You'll get a message saying that it's still processing. This usually takes around four hours. After it is verified, you'll get an email stating that your account has been approved, as well as email stating that your FICA documents has been approved. If this takes longer than two business days, then you'll need to submit a ticket to Easy Equities so that one of the support team can help you to set it up if they, for example, need more documents from you. Okay, cool. So once your account has been approved and FICA verified, then you can go onto the Easy Equities website. So it's just www.easyequities.co.za. You enter your username and password, log in, and that will bring you to the web portal interface. Now, before we start buying shares or anything like that, there's just a couple of settings that I like to set in the beginning to make sure that the whole process is a lot easier. So I'm just going to go through everything with you and then we'll move on to the exciting part. All right, so click on the top right corner and go to my profile. Here you will see all the information that you entered when you filled in the application form. Make sure all the details is correct. If you want to change something, then you can change the white blocks. Um, the gray blocks you can't change on the platform yourself. If there's any problems, then you'll have to submit the ticket. So I'm just going to show you how to do that. You go to this little question mark, click on that, go to submit a ticket, fill in your user ID. You need to tell them how they can assist you with, for example, your details, your email address, the subject and description. So, for example, if your ID number is incorrect, then you can just say subject ID number is incorrect. And then in description, tell them what your correct number is. And then just state that you are not a robot, which I'm sure we are all not and then click on submit that will send an email to easy equities and one of the support staff will come back to you with some assistance right so let's go back all right so do the same with your address info make sure everything is correct your identity or kyc know your client make sure all of that is correct and then your tax info if you are not a tax resident or if you're younger than 18 years you don't need a tax number to open an account just say you are not registered for tax purposes and move on but if you are for example if you're employed then chances are you are registered and you should be so then click are you registered yes state your identification type enter your tax number indicate your tax residence and state that this is your primary residence save and proceed all right and then bank info this is important because without getting a verified bank account, you won't be able to make any withdrawals or to set up recurring payments, which we'll get to in a while. So if you want to add, a, add an account, give a description, for example, personal bank account, select the country, which would be South Africa, currency would be ZAR, bank name, choose the bank name where you bank, bank account type, check, whatever, fill in your account number and your bank account holder and create. Now you'll see once you create your account, it will state that it is unverified. Then Easy Equities will have to process the information, make sure it is correct. And then once that is processed, then you'll get an email stating your bank account has been verified. And then when you go look on the portal, you'll see this little green verified icon. Now guys, it's really important that you use your own personal bank account. You can't use your mother's or your friend's or anyone else because that will count as a third party and they don't accept that. That is why this account from NetBank indicates that it's failed. All right, so once all of that is done, then there's just another setting that I want you guys to go check out. You go to the top right, click on account preferences. Then the first one is your transaction fees. So you can either choose that the amount that you enter when you buy a share excludes the transaction fees or that it includes the transaction fees. So for example, if you want to invest 100 Rand and your transaction fees is 3 Rand, then when you select the amount excludes transaction fees, you'll be charged 103 Rand. But if you choose the amount is inclusive of transaction fees, you'll only be charged 100 Rand, but your net investment will be 97 Rand. I prefer that it is inclusive because that just saves me a headache to try and figure out 
how much the cost would be. So I select that one. And then the next one is the dividend and income distribution preference. So shares and property pay dividends and cash and bonds pay income every now and again throughout the year. Now you can either select that this income that you receive in form of dividends or interest gets paid into the cash portion of the account or that it is automatically reinvested into the holding. What that means is if you select that the money gets paid into the cash portion of the account, you have more control over what you want to do with that money. So you can cash it out or you can buy other shares or you can buy the same shares. But I prefer to have it automatically reinvested in the same holding as I am still in the growth phase of my investment journey. So this just kind of automates that process for me, makes my life a bit easier because then I don't have to go back and buy the stuff again, but you can select which one ever you prefer. Right, so click on save and proceed. All right, cool. That is most of the boring stuff out of the way. So next step, we'll have to fund our account. So you go to your menu, top left, you go down to my funds, deposits, then you'll see there are two options that you can use to deposit funds, either EFT or credit card. I prefer using the EFT as it is for free and it is almost instant if you use the same bank account as Easy Equities, but it can take up to 48 hours. The credit card is also an option, but you'll get charged a flat fee of 1 Rand 60 and another fee that is 2.3% of the total value that you transacted which is a lot of money and I think it is unnecessary cost. So if you want to use that, then fine, but I prefer the EFT. Okay, so make sure you select the ZAR account at the top right. Don't worry about all the accounts, I'll get to that in a minute. Then EFT, select a bank where you also have your bank account. So for me, it will be FNB, for example. Then it's just pretty straightforward. Just go to your banking app, create account, for example, the name is First World Trader, account number, you copy all of these details. And then, very important, make sure you use the correct EFT reference. The EFT reference is the two letters, EE, dash, and then followed by a seven letter string. So, make sure you use the correct one. You can either click on copy and then copy that over. It's also shown over here where you can copy it. And then you enter all of that details, enter the amount and click transfer. Again, during business hours, this is usually within minutes where they will notify you that the money has been deposited, but it can technically take up to 48 hours. But in my experience, it was quite quick. All right, cool. So after the money has been deposited, you'll see that it will reflect under this account number. It's also a good idea to send yourself a proof of payment in case something goes wrong that you can send to Easy Equities and they can then use to find your money. Okay, so for your tax-free savings account, for example, the TFSA, you can also deposit money directly into it the same way that we did just now. Just be careful with a tax-free savings account. You can only deposit 36,000 Rand per year. So I always prefer to deposit to my ZAR account first and then transfer to my tax-free savings account within the app. It's for free. It just gives me more control over how much I put into there just so that I don't make a silly mistake. If you exceed the 36,000 Rand, you get taxed by 40% on the difference. So if you don't know what all of this means, then go check out my video on tax-free savings accounts in South Africa. It's really important that you get this right. So if you want to transfer money from your ZAR account to tax-free savings account, then you go to the menu, you go to inter account transfers, you go from from account, which will be your ZAR account, to account, which will be your tax free savings account. And then they just give you a notification on the limit for tax free savings accounts, which you need to be aware of. And then you select the amount. Uh, for example, if I want to transfer 500, not cost me any fees, I will just need to agree to the terms and conditions and click transfer now and then the money will reflect into the tax free savings account almost instantaneously. Okay, cool. So now we have money in our accounts, we can finally start investing, but I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of the platform and the homepage and everything so that you are aware of where everything is and how it works. Then we'll move on to the buying part of the video. All right, so on the homepage, you'll see that there's the menu which we have used so far. I'm not gonna go through everything now, we'll go through it step by step. There's another menu at the top, which we'll also go through in a while. The next important thing is the tab here at the top. So this is all the accounts that you have registered on this account. So you can see you have your Easy Equity ZAR, 
TFSA, which is tax-free savings account. Easy Equities USD is your US dollar account. Easy Properties, ZAR, where you can invest in property. You've got a demo ZAR and a demo USD account. And if you click to the right, you can activate a new account type, which is the Preservation Provident Fund, Preservation Pension Fund, and the Easy Equities AUD, which is the Australian-based account. All right, so for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to focus on the ZAR and Tax-Free Savings account. I will make another video on the US dollar account because there's a lot of other things to know about. But um, yeah, let's start with the Easy Equity ZAR account. So when you scroll down, you'll see that there are different types of investments. So let's start from the left hand side. Equities, same as stocks and shares. It's what a company provides to the public to raise money to grow the company. So you buy a share in the company, the company's value goes up, the share value goes up, you get more money. It's quite simple. The equity step is where you can buy individual shares. All right. ETFs stands for exchange traded funds, it's basically a product that tracks the performance of an index, which comprises of a set of rules. So for example, the top 40 index tracks the performance of the top 40 companies in South Africa. And when you buy a share in the ETF, you automatically buy shares in all 40 companies. I made a lot of videos on ETFs that you can go check out. It's my favorite way of investing because it's well diversified and it is very cheap and they work the same way as equities as you also buy them on the stock exchange like a share. ETNs are exchange traded notes. It's kind of like debt instruments that gives investors access to a wide spectrum of assets. So the investor will lend his money to the issuer of the ETN, which is usually a bank, and they will then receive a return based on the move movements of the specific benchmark. These are seen as more risky type of assets, so it is not really something that I would recommend for beginners. The next up is crypto. You all know about crypto by now. So Easy Equities only have the EC10 token, which is basically a collection of the top 10 cryptocurrency tokens in the market weighted by market capitalization. So it works similar to an ETF and a unit trust, so whereby if you buy one unit in the crypto token index, you automatically invest in all 10 crypto tokens. Just one important thing with this specific product from Easy Equities, you don't own the cryptocurrencies, you can't transfer it to another wallet or to another exchange, except when you have more than 1 million Rand in that specific investment. So if you are below that, which I'm sure we all are, then you don't physically own them, but you still get a return on the performance of these tokens. The EC10 token is only available in the ZAR account and Easy Equities don't as of yet have any individual crypto tokens that you can buy. Maybe in the future, but not at the moment. Next are unit trusts. So unit trusts are basically like a collective investment scheme where different people pool their money together and then as investor you buy a unit similar to a, an ETF. They track the performance of a group of assets and you will then get the return of those assets. They are more expensive than ETFs because they are generally more actively managed. So it's fine for some people. I prefer ETFs because they're cheaper. If you don't know the difference between ETFs and unit trust, go check out this video as well. Next is the basket. So the basket is a product from Easy Equities. It's basically a collection of shares with assigned weightings, which has been pre-selected by a well-known personality or pro. Just be careful with the baskets because these guys that compile these baskets are not registered financial advisors or fund managers. So they cannot actually offer financial advice. The basket is also not managed actively. So it is compiled in the beginning, you buy it, and then it is left as is. Um, and you will also need to pay a basket fee ranging anything from 0 to 2% of the basket value to the creator of the basket as an incentive for their strategy and intellectual property. Now, I don't really see the value in investing in these baskets as it is much more fun to compile your own investment journey. And if you binge watch all my videos, then you should be able to do this. So I don't really go for these. And then the last option is the bundles. So the bundles are much more formal structured product that is actively managed by a financial advisor or fund manager. So same, you also have to pay an extra fee between zero to 2% for them to manage it. And they will then buy and sell products within the bundle as they seem fit. So it's similar to hiring an asset manager to manage your investments. 
Again, if you want somebody to hold your hand through the process, then you can start with bundles. But I just like to do my own investments for now. So, uh, but it is available for you if you want to. And there are also no lock-in periods or any penalties for early disinvestments. So if you are not happy with the performance, then you can just sell it off and you don't have to pay any penalties. So then the next step is the category tax. So under equities, you'll see this like top 40, Thrive, Vehicle and Parts, Banks. This is just a way to categorize all of the assets under that class. So for example, top 40 will give you the top 40 shares in South Africa that you can go through. With ETFs, they will give you a category of low risk, conservative, moderate, moderate, aggressive, and aggressive. So depending on what your risk profile is, you can sort them accordingly. ETNs don't have any categorization. Crypto has only one index. Unit trusts, they also split it amongst income funds, balance funds, property funds, local equity, and global equity funds. Baskets, no categories, and bundles also similar to ETFs with the low risk up until the aggressive risk. So it's just a way to sort through all of this. All right, so and then if we go through all of the shares on this platform, the search bar, you can search. So say you don't want to scroll down everything and you want to find Capitec, then you just type it in the search bar and you will get it. Then show all prices. If you click on that, it flips over, it gives you the graph and the monthly performance as well as the price, which is a nice way to see how it performed previously. View, you can either view the icons or you can view them just as a list. Sort from A to Z, Z to A, show 24 to 48 at once and then at the bottom you can you can navigate to the next page. Yeah, pretty basic stuff. Okay, so I just want to show you with your Zara account you have access to basically everything. Equities, ETFs, ETNs, crypto, unit trust, baskets and bundles. Your tax free savings account though you only have access to ETFs, unit trust, baskets and bundles. The reason for this is because of the rules of a tax free savings account you cannot invest in individual shares or cryptocurrencies or hedge funds or ETNs because remember tax free savings account is a retirement product so they kind of want to protect you against losses and against unnecessary risky investments so you'll only have these options available your US dollar account will be similar to your Zara account with equities, ETNs, ETFs, baskets and bundles but no unit trusts your easy properties, um, this one I'll make a video on its own because it's a lot different than the normal ones. Your demo czar would be the same as your easy equity czar and your demo US dollar would be the same as your easy equities US dollar. So the demo czar and demo USD dollar is a quite a great idea from easy equity side because it basically gives you for the demo czar a hundred thousand rand and for the demo USD dollar a thousand dollars as free play monopoly money. So when you're completely new to the platform, just use your demo accounts, follow what I do. You buy it with money that is not yours. You buy it risk-free, you get a feel for the platform. And once you're comfortable, you can start using your own money. But uh, yeah, it works exactly the same as you would have bought it yourself. So you can actually see how your investments will grow, but you can obviously not withdraw any of these money because that will just make easy equities uh, bankrupt in a day. Okay, cool. So that is the homepage. Now let's move on to the next one, account overview. I'm just gonna select my easy equity czar. So whenever you are doing anything, just make sure that you have the correct account selected at the top. So we're gonna look at my czar account. So now you scroll down, you'll see that there's a scary number. It's the account number. So this is a bit confusing, but basically what this means is you've got a double letter EE followed by seven letters, a dash, and then another seven letters. So the first seven letters before the dash is your user ID or easy ID number. It is the number for your whole account, the one that you registered. But then the next seven numbers following the dash is basically the number for this specific account. So this is my number for the Zara account. If I select the tax free savings account, then I'll have a different number. My US dollar account will have a different number. But the first string of numbers will stay the same. It's only the second string of numbers that will be different. It's usually just the last digits. It's just to differentiate each one of these accounts with each other. 
Okay, then you'll go to your portfolio for this specific account. So this is my Zara account. You'll see the current value that this is all your investments and the cash amount in your account. Your movement on current holdings, profit or loss. This is the random amount. And then you'll get your percentage, profit or loss. You get this visual representation circle diagram showing the different weights of your assets. So I mainly use this account to invest in crypto. Hence why crypto is so heavily weighted and then funds to invest. You get the name of the investment types, the distribution, the percentage and the current value. Then this one, if you click on manager, it's just show you who is managing your money. So I manage my own money. That's why it stays self-managed. But if you invest it in a bundle, for example, then that asset manager's name will probably appear there. Okay, moving on. Total profit loss on current holdings. If you click there, you'll see the purchase value. So this is what you actually paid for this product. And then the last valuation, which is what it is valued today. And then this will be the difference at the top in rand and percentage. Total brokerage and statutory costs. I will go through this in a bit more detail when we go to the buying part. But it's basically split between brokerage, VAT and statutory costs that you can see the different amounts. Total bundle costs, similar to the previous one, except remember, if you buy a bundle, you'll have to pay an extra management fee. I don't have bundles, so I don't have any costs here. Then there's a total interest on free cash. If you keep cash in your account, such as what I do, you earn an interest, but it is very low. It's like prime interest rate minus 3.5%. And you also then need to pay an interest fee ranging from 1.27% to 1.75% of the interest in. So this is why I have interest income and a cash management fee as well as VAT on that fee. So it's not a good investment to keep cash in your Easy Equities account. I just keep some there because I personally rent cost average every week into crypto. So, uh, but I do earn some interest, which is nice, I guess. And then net accrual is just your interest minus your costs. To the right, you'll see your funds to invest. You've got withdrawable funds, unsettled cash, and locked funds. All right, so this is important when you want to withdraw your cash. So Easy Equities has put certain processes in place to make sure that they run the platform as efficiently as possible, and at the same time to try and keep fraudsters out of the community. So they had to implement the following rules. So locked funds is when funds are recently deposited, they may be subject to certain locked time periods depending on the type of deposit. When you deposit funds into Easy Equities, you can use those funds to buy and sell shares or ETFs or anything, but you can just not withdraw them to your bank account for a certain period of days, but you can still use this money to trade, just not to withdraw. Then unsettled cash, when you sell a share, you'll get money, obviously, but that money has to go through a five business day period where it needs to be settled by the JSE before you can get the money withdrawn. So usually you have to wait five days before you can withdraw those funds. If you need it immediately, then you can go for a function called early settlement, but we'll get to that in a second when you get to the withdrawal section of the video. So below this, you'll see there's a fund this account option. This is the same what we discussed earlier. Withdraw money, we'll get to that in a second, don't worry. And then inter-account transfers, we already covered when we transferred from the Zara account to the tax free savings account. So not going to go through that again. All right, so below this, you'll see that there's the all holdings, pending orders, and recent transactions. If you click on all holdings, this will show you all the holdings within that specific account. So again, I use this account only for investing in the crypto bundle. So you'll get the holdings name, the purchase value, what you paid, current value, what it's currently valued at at the market, the current price per share, the profit and loss, the, the rand amount and the percentage. You, if you click on that holding, give you a bit more information. Again, the name, the number of tokens I own, the average purchase price that I paid, the delayed price. So this is what is currently valued at the market. The price displayed on Easy Equities is delayed by 15 minutes, but this is fairly accurate. And then if you want to learn more about this specific investment, you can click on these tabs. It is just a bit more research that they provide to you. Then these two tabs, dividend preference, is what we did earlier when we went to account preferences. Again, if you want the dividends to be automatically reinvested, then you just tap the automatic reinvestment. Otherwise, if you want it to be paid out into your cash, then you select that one. 
it's just another way to use that function then add recurring this is a recurring payment we'll get to that once we buy an actual share next to that it's the one month return percentage and the daily change and then the graph shows you how the asset grew um, so you can use your cursor to just go through every single day you can select the one month performance three months six months one year and max so as you can see crypto did quite well and then beneath that you'll see the underlying investments under this specific token so we've got bitcoin ethereum binance all of those with the individual prices the weight they are weighted by market capitalization so bitcoin is worth the most so it has the highest weight and then also the 24 hour change of that specific token so then if you go to pending orders there's only a certain time that the markets are actually open it's on business days from monday to friday from five past nine to 20 to five. So if you, for example, want to buy a share outside of these times, for example, at eight o'clock at night, then it will be a pending order that will go through on the next business day. And it will then reflect here. I didn't buy anything recently, so that's why I don't have any pending orders. And then recent transactions is just all the transactions that you occurred in the past couple of days. Easy Equities is very transparent. You see every single random cent that you spend and what you earn. So this is just a way for you to go through your statements if you ever need to. Okay, cool. So now that you are very familiar with the platform, let's go buy a share. So there are different ways to do this. Best way is to go and click on the Invest Now tab. So again, it will show you all of these different options available. So I'm gonna show you how to buy individual share, for example. You can select the top 40. And I want to buy Naspers. All right, so I type it in, gives me the icon, then I click on it. Then it takes me to the buying page. So again, gives you the, the logo, the name, the ticker symbol or short name. It shows me it's an equity, it's part of the top 40, and it's invested in media. So I again get my one month return, daily change. I can change this graph to see how the share performed over the past couple of months. They give me a bit more information about this specific share. There's more information on Yahoo Finance, Business Life and R Research. So you can click on those tabs to find out more. Then you go to the right hand side. So they give me the last updated price. Remember, the prices on Easy Equities are the delayed by 15 minutes. So if you want the exact price of the market, you can request a price update. This will cost you some money with Easy Credits. If you are investing for the long term, then you don't really need this. I don't use it, so I just skip that. Okay, so then they give you these three numbers. Selling at or bid, buying at or ask, and last price. The selling at price is what you will get when you sell the asset, and the buying at is what you will pay to buy the asset. You will see that there's a difference between the two, and this is another cost to you as the investor. This is called the bid offer spread. So in order to get the bid offer spread, you subtract the buying at from the selling at price, and then you divide that by the buying at or ask price, and you multiply it by 100. So we can see for this specific share at this specific time, the buy spread is around about 2.1%. This is quite high. This is another cost to you. So the reason why it's so high is because this is a Sunday morning, so the markets are closed, there's not anyone trading. So usually the general rule of thumb is when there's more people trading, the buy spread offer is lower because there's more movement in the market. So what I usually do is I don't buy directly when the markets open or when the markets are closed. I wait for a couple of hours in the morning just to get the markets running and then I buy because then, then the bid spread offer is much lower. So usually between 12 and one o'clock during business days. All right. So easy credits is again, when you want to get a live update, which I don't use. Okay, so the buy instructions will then tell me to buy it open. This is because again, it's a Sunday morning, so I won't be able to buy a share now. It will only execute tomorrow morning and then it will be under pending instructions as I mentioned earlier. But in any case, if this was during business hours, then you'll just buy the share directly. So then you can enter the amount. So let's say I want to buy 500. You can click on enter then it will give you the amount of shares so 0 0.19 so another cool thing about easy equities is they trade in fractional shares meaning that you don't need to buy a whole share at a time so for example naspers is very expensive it's 2530 rand 
not all of us will be able to buy a whole share at a time but because easy equities has the fractional share rights you can put in any amount any minimum you can put in one rand i'll show you if you want to you can buy one rand worth of nasdaq shares which is 0 0.0003 which is nothing but just to give you an idea this is a massive improvement in the financial industry and makes investing accessible to everyone okay in any case so then you'll see that you entered 500 rand but the trade value is only 498.31 this is because we have investment costs so if we click on that you'll see that there's broker commission ignore the easy money discount i'll get to that in the end of the video settlement and administration investor protection levy value added tax and securities transfer and admin all right so easy equities is a brokerage platform and they do have to charge certain fees so the brokerage fees are 0.25 percent of the investment value the settlement and admin is usually about 0.075 percent and this is a fee for the electronic settlement of your transactions that they use an external company for investor protection levy and admin is 0.0002 percent it's just a fee for the regulation of the securities market that is 15 percent on the brokerage the settlement and the ipl um, which usually accounts to 0.011 percent and then lastly the securities transfer and admin is a 0.25 percent charge for each will share so this is a fee that easy equities needs to pay sash for every whole share oh, fuck. <sighs> we are back the power just went off you know hashtag load sharing thank you escom but we are back with the video all right so the securities transfer and tax and admin is 0.25 percent of the whole share and um, this is a fee that easy equities needs to pay sash for every whole share sold um, and they basically charge you and then pay sash on your behalf this is only on single stocks not on etfs and if you only own a fraction of a share you'll only get charged a fraction of this fee but um, you don't have to worry too much about all of these fees all of the fees of easy equities on the czar tax free savings account and us dollar account is available on these profile costs that i'll link to in the description but just to give you a summary you can expect to pay run about 0.3 percent per etf trade or 0.62 percent per share trade for your czar account and 0.36 percent for an etf trade for your tax free savings account that is the total cost that you will incur for easy equities when you both when you buy and sell a share so then you'll see below that there's plus add insurance so what this insurance basically means is easy equities use invest sure which is an investment fraud insurance that offers protection to investors to any fraud or misleading information provided by a company that may affect the share price of the company negatively resulting in a drastic drop in share price so this is basically when the directors of the company screw up so badly that the company goes to uh, and the share drops so heavily resulting in significant losses to the investor so this type of insurance will then pay out up to 70 percent of the losses to the investor but this will cost you an additional 0.56 percent to the value of your purchase on top of what you already paid and the cover only lasts 12 months if you trade in individual shares like small stocks like the new companies that are risky then you might be going for this but i personally don't use it then below that you'll see there's a donate for good this is a way from easy equities to support south african projects so it's a feature on the platform that invites investors to donate to a different charity every few weeks so you can see you can either choose to don donate 5 rand 50 rand or 500 rand when you click on it it will be added to the amount at the final buy confirmation page of the platform when you buy an instrument and um yeah this is available in both your czar and tax free savings account so if you want to learn more about the charity you can just click on the name and then you can donate if you want to all right so now you can either buy it at open so again this is a sunday morning so i'll only be able to buy it when the markets open again tomorrow morning but under normal circumstances you can just buy it at market order or you can set up a recurring investment so a recurring investment is a kind of a way to fund your account or to invest in a specific instrument at regular intervals um, you can either set a recurring investment to have money deposited from your bank account into directly into your easy equities account for you to invest with as you wish 
or you can make a deposit and then use that to buy a specific share ETF or bundle automatically every month. So this is useful for those who have very little financial discipline as it is a way to pay yourself first, meaning to have money go off directly into your investments at the beginning of the month before you have a chance to blow it all on useless crap. If you want to set that up, you click on recurring, then you'll be brought to this page at recurring investment. You enter the amount, you give the annual increase percentage. They default it to 10% because inflation is around about 6%. So you need to increase it annually to beat inflation. You can again, choose for the amount to be inclusive or exclusive of transaction fees. Then choose a payment method to fund your recurring investment. Either you select debit order from your bank account or user account available funds. So this means that you can either set a recurring investment to go off directly from your bank account into the investment on Easy Equities or from the Zar Cash account from Easy Equities into the investment. So both of them, uh, just always make sure you have enough cash available because if this debit order bounces, you'll get charged a hundred rand debit order failure fee, which is unnecessary. You can select the interval, so either monthly, quarterly or annually. You just select the day and month. And then you also just need to select the type of bank account where the debit order must come from and click on the, the confirmation and the terms and conditions. Just note that this may take up to three business days to be registered or to be approved and you will also incur an additional 0.1% recurring investment fee for each of the total value traded on, on top of the brokerage fee that I mentioned previously. But again, this is a way to automate your investments. So if it is something that you need, then go for it. Okay, so the last thing I want to touch on is you'll see that there's either an instruction to buy it open or market order or to place an order, meaning to place a limit order. So a market order is the account default and this means that when you place an order, it will be filled at the current live buying and selling price in the market at the time of your transaction if this is within business hours. This is the default setting and the option that most of us will use as the trade will then execute immediately and you will be done with it. But for those who have a bit more experience and believe that the, the, the value of the share at that current moment is not what it is supposed to be, you can place a limit by order. So this option will allow you to define the price at which you would like to buy the share. The transaction will then go through once the buy at, so the asking price is equal or below the one you have specified. So say for example, you believe that the buying at or ask price is too high, then you can set up a limit order for what you believe is the fair value. So for, say for example, 2,584 is too much, I believe it needs to be 2,500. Then you put in your set price. So then this limit order will execute once the share price of that specific share drops to at or below the 2,500 Rand, and then the order will go through. Um, just keep in mind, you need to be realistic with this. You can't put in 10 Rand because then it will never execute. So this is not a guarantee that the order will go through but it is a way for you if you know the share price or if you think you know that you can buy it at a slightly cheaper price. Um, just know like with any other service you will need to pay a fee so this is an extra order admin fee of 0.35% of transaction value on every buy and sell limit order up and above the brokerage fee that we already mentioned. So a sell order is basically just the reverse of a buy order if you believe that the share price is valued more than the 2530 rand currently then you can put in a sell order for 2600 for example and then it will execute once the share price does rise to that point so this is usually used mostly by traders people who have more experience and for long investors we don't really use that i just always buy it at market value um, because then I know I buy my shares whenever I'm on the platform and I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to log back in and to check it. So that's usually what I buy. So I just buy directly. Okay, cool. Then the last thing that I just want to show you guys, once you start navigating the platform and you look through different types of shares and ETFs, you might start to identify a couple that you really like. So an easy way to kind of group them all together is just to add them to the watch list. So when you're on this share, just check the, the little square bar at the top, add to wish list, 
and then that will be added so when you go to invest now you'll see that your wish list or what your watch list is identified over here and there's all your kind of shares and ETFs that you would like to track all right so now let's look at how you can sell your shares you go to your menu and then you go to my investments sell then easy equities will show you all your uh, current holdings under each account so for my ZAR account I've got the easy 10 for my tax free savings account I've got a couple of ETFs and my US dollar account I also have two ETFs so let's just go to my tax free savings account let's uh, take the total world click on sell so this is very similar to the buy it's just the reverse so we've got all the information we've got the selling at and buying at price again you need to look at the spread which is the difference between the buying and the selling divided by the buying at price to make sure that you're not paying unnecessary fees and then you can select the amount you want to sell so either the random amount or the percentage and then uh, when you select that it will give you this investment cost as well which is again all the costs that I mentioned earlier you can place a limit sell order which is just the reverse of a buy sell order and then you can sell your shares it's pretty straightforward but just remember that when you sell the shares then you need to wait at least five days for it to settle by the JSE before you can withdraw those funds all right and then moving on to the next section how to withdraw funds you go to your menu bar go to my funds withdrawal so again make sure you select the correct account you'll see there's different terms again your available funds less the unsettled cash locked funds we've talked about this already and then the withdrawal funds this is the actual amount that you can withdraw from your easy equities account to your bank account so i've got for example 500 rand so i can put in 500 then you need to select your bank account so my personal one check that all the details is correct click on i confirm so if you have some unsettled cash then you can select the early settlement where it will reflect on this bar you can click on settle then instead of waiting for five business days it will allow you to get the funds in one business day but this comes at an additional cost of 0.2 percent as well and this does not override the locked up period when you deposit money just note that withdrawal requests after two o'clock in that business day are only processed on the next business day and may take up to two to three business days to reflect in your bank account okay cool that's the most important information but just a couple of other things if you ever need to access some important documents such as your statements or tax certificates you go to menu scroll down to statements so with this one you will find your tax certificates so easy equities gives you your it3b which is your interest income and your it3c which is the profit or losses realized on the sale of securities forms and it, at the end of the tax year you will need to submit these to SARS for your tax return and then statements is basically just the monthly information about your accounts such as the portfolio summary performance asset allocation portfolio cash flow and more just a nice way to see where exactly your money is going and how much it has grown in the past month and then you can also go to your transaction history you can select the date and to see exactly where uh, what money you've paid for your fees and the money that was deposited and everything again easy equities is very transparent and you can even print and download the past year's transactions okay cool then i'm just going to run through all the other small stuff just to make sure we covered everything so if you go to menu new listings overview so you'll see every now and again before a company enters the stock market they are listed as an ipo which stands for the initial public offering and this is basically where a company makes a debut into the stock market and then they will offer their shares at a special predetermined price to the investors so this is kind of like buying into a company before it goes mainstream this is also a bit for more advanced investors that knows how to analyze different companies not something for beginners but just so you're aware of so if there's a new ipo they will be listed over here and if you invested in any of those you'll go under my investments new listings and they will be displayed over there all right we touched on account overview invest now new listings sell my recurrent investments so if you did set up a recurrent investment they will reflect here or if you want to set up one you can do it over here so either directly into your shares or into your available funds account 
Then pending orders is again, if you make a investment outside of market hours, it will reflect over here. Switch unit trusts. If you do invest in unit trust, then you can use this option to switch between them. Then moving on, deposits. Again, you guys know this is where you put in your deposit money. Into account transfers, we've covered. Easy credits. This is where you can buy the easy credits to get the life price for each share on the buy page. Source of funds is basically every time that you deposit money into equities, you need to declare what is the source of funds. So mostly it will be savings or salary or bonus or commission or anything. Just make sure you have something that reflects over there. Then withdrawal, it's when you want to withdraw money, obviously. Managed credit cards. If you do decide to fund your account with a credit card, then you can use this tab to add a credit card and to make sure the details are correct. Now, moving on to vouchers. If somebody sent you a voucher, you can redeem your voucher by typing in the code and then the money will reflect in your Easy Equity Zara account. If for some reason you want to send a voucher to a family member, you go to send a voucher. You, in, you make sure your details are correct. You enter the amount, say for example, 1000. You enter the recipient's name, surname, email address, a personal message, and then just note that you'll also pay a 1% fee plus tax, which is 1.15% in total for the voucher. So if I want to send a thousand rand, then I'll need to pay a thousand and eleven rand fifty to send the gift. Right, then when we look at the top menu, account overview we've been through, invest now, we've looked at my thrive. So this is basically Easy Equity's loyal program designed to guide you in the best investment habits. And in return, you can earn up to 100% discount in brokerage on Thrive Stocks. So what is Thrive Stocks? If you go to Invest Now and you go to ETFs, you'll notice the ones with the little rocket uh, at the top left is part of the Thrive Stocks. So you'll get discount on these specific stocks. So how does it work? You'll see that there's four different challenges that you need to complete. The first one is education, where you go to the Easy Academy, which we'll go to now. If you complete the lesson for the month, you get 10% discount. Community and social, if you refer a friend, then you get 30% discount. Financial health, you can go through it. It's basically when you check into your portfolio every two weeks. And basically, you just need to ensure that you have no more than 10% of your investment portfolio in a single share no more than 50% in one ETF and no more than 30% in cash. Discipline is just to make sure that you have more deposits than withdrawals for the months. And then bundle is to basically to invest at least 10% of your portfolio in a bundle for the pros. I don't like the bundle part because you need to complete all of these uh, challenges to get the 50% discount and I don't use bundles. So I usually manage to qualify for the other three, but then not the last one. Um, but yeah, I don't know if it's really that worth that. And then donate for good. You can get 10% if you donate a five rand to one charity. Okay, just note that if you complete the challenges in November, the discount will only be reflected in December. So this 30% discount is what I received from the previous month, which was October. Moving on, refer and earn. This is uh, Easy Equities affiliate program. So you can refer somebody to open account on your affiliate link. So you can email them, send a tweet, Facebook or WhatsApp. And when they click on that specific link, it will take them to the registration page. So they need to register an account, figure it, deposit funds and invest. And then you will get 50 Rand worth of easy money. So easy money, if you click at the top right, you'll see I've got 196 Rand 27. It's because I received four people that used my referral link to invest. So I can't withdraw that money, but I do get a discount when I buy shares. So just to show you a quick example again, if I want to buy NASPERS, let's put the 500. You'll see with the trans investment costs, I've got the brokerage commission and then I've got the easy money discount, which is basically cancelling out the broker's commission. So it helps a bit, not a lot because I don't use my Zara account that much, but maybe in the future it will be more beneficial. Then next to that, you've got the, the little gift icon, which is buy vouchers or redeem a voucher. You've got the notification bell, which gives you a notification every time you have a new deposit or when there's a dividend payment. And then the question mark is the help center where you, where you can submit a ticket or where you can get more information on the platform. Then lastly, 
this menu. My Thrive will take you to the same Thrive page. My profile, we already touched, it's where you check your profile, your personal info, your tax info, um, your identity, all the information. If you want to change your password, you can do it here. You have to remember your old password, of course. Account management is when you want to activate a new account or manage existing accounts. So, for example, if I want to add my preservation or Easy Equities AUD, then I can click on this one. And if I want to remove an account, I can say manage existing accounts and then I can just unclick one of these accounts. Account preferences we looked at. And then the last thing is Easy Academy. The first time that you click on this, you'll get an email that you need to register and then you just type in your username or password. So I would really encourage you to go onto the academy and to look at the, the courses. So the Thrive Education is the one that you need to complete in order to get that 10% discount. So there's a bunch of lessons that you can go through. It really explains the basics of investing and if you are new or intermediate, I would encourage you to go through it. You get the discount for the brokerage fee and you learn a lot. And there are also other courses that will teach you a bit more in depth about investing in general. So the Easy Equities 101, Easy Equities 202 and the Mr. 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 Fee, Mr. Fi, Murphy, I don't know, something like that. That it will help you to learn more about how this whole system works. If you haven't already learned everything in this long video. Okay, and then apart from this, Easy Equities also has a very nice blog. There's an Easy ETF page where you can read up about different ETFs. The Mr. Fee is the customized investment plans or Murphy that it's like a kind of an Easy Equities advisor that you can go check out. They've got a research portal with expert analysis, market trends, in-depth info on domestic and international shares and ETFs. They've got a YouTube channel. They also have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. So there's quite a lot of information about this platform that you can go check and to acquaint it with the platform. So I will link to all of these resources down in the description that you can go check out, as well as some important documents such as the cost profiles and the T's and C's so that you can have a proper overview of what this investment platform is all about. Woo! That was a long one. I hope by the end of this video, you are comfortable with the platform. I did go through a lot of effort to make this video as comprehensive as possible. So if you found it helpful, I would really enjoy it if you can just pop a like button and share it with your other friends and family that is new to investing. It's really an awesome platform for first time investors. And once you get a hang of it, you'll see that it is quite a fun journey. There's also a massive community on Twitter and Facebook with regards to the Easy Equities platform that you can go check out and yeah. Be part of it, participate, engage, and share your journey. That is why we are all here, to grow our own wealth and to create a better future for us and our families. But yeah, thank you for watching this video. Have a lucky day, and I'll see you in another video next week. Cheers.